Hello everybody. Finally we're back. And it's that tune that means it's time to go wild. We're finally coming back with the Time to Go Wild Radio podcast, first of the 22-23 season. We hope you've been having a really, really good summer and enjoying the game so far. Been a bit of a change. We're a bit of a stalled start. But hopefully we'll be bringing you the usual roundup of news, interviews, scores, and little tidbits from the world of ice hockey across Widnes, Halton, the Northwest, and anywhere else we find it. It's going to be an interesting season, this one. An extra team's back. But you know what it means. It's time to go wild. Hello once again. New season's well underway. The Time to Go Wild radio podcast finally getting off the ground again after a bit of a stalled start this year. A um, couple of reasons, just logistics, been busy, looking after things. New season for the Wild, a few changes behind the scenes as many of you are aware. But we are finally getting off the ground. One major stumbling block um, in a way for part of the content for the podcast was the scores which we have some for you this week uh, many of you are probably aware of the changes within the uh, EIHA and the fact that Fixtures Live is no more there is a new system coming on stream from what I have noticed and gathered I have a feeling it's being tested so be patient they're getting there it, they've had a, a lot of teething troubles with it but the new um, online electronic replacement for Fixtures Live, we'll say, that will be coming on stream soon, all being well if the tests all go to plan. But, oh, excuse me, we've got uh, quite a few little bits to go through tonight. Your usual little um, articles and um, tidbits. But, you know what? We're going to do them with the usual little roundup of scores from the past week or so. Well, weekish. So our roundup of the scores from around the leagues that we try and follow as much as possible on Time to Go Wild Radio. Starting with Elite League Challenge Cup action from Thursday, 29th of September. Coventry Blaze 5, Cardiff Devils 3. On Friday, Glasgow Clan 2, Belfast Giants 3. On Saturday, 1st of October, Cardiff Devils 3, Coventry Blaze 2. Sheffield Steelers 2, Nottingham Panthers 1. Belfast Giants 5, Glasgow Clan 0. For league action on Friday the 30th of September, Nottingham Panthers 6, Dundee Stars 2. On Saturday 1st of October, Dundee Stars 4, Manchester Storm 5 after overtime. Five Flyers 3, Guildford Flames 5. On Sunday 2nd of October, Coventry Blaze 2, Sheffield Steelers 3. Manchester Storm 0, Cardiff Devils 3. Guildford Flames 5, Five Flyers 3. At present, we're not able to bring you the uh, EIHA Junior results. We'll get them in as soon as we can. However, we do have WNIHL Women's Division 2 action from Saturday 1st of October. Solway 8, Widnes 4. On Sunday, Whitley 8, Kingston 2. Planet Ice NIHL National League action from Saturday, 1st of October. Leeds Knights 5, Bees 2. Milton Keynes Lightning 7, Hull Seahawks 2. Bristol Pit Bulls 4, Peterborough Phantoms 8. Swindon Wildcats 4, Raiders 1. Basingstoke Bison 2, Telford Tigers 1. On Sunday, 2nd of October, Hull Seahawks 0. Basingstoke Bison, 4. Sheffield Steel Dogs, 5. Bristol Pit Bulls, 2. 
Bees 4, Leeds Knights 5, Raiders 2, Swindon Wildcats 3, Peterborough Phantoms 4, Telford Tigers 3, NIHL Division 1 North Morally action from Saturday. Solway Sharks 10, Solihull Barons 2, Sheffield Scimitars 2, Whitley Warriors 4. From Sunday, Blackburn Hawks 2, Solway Sharks 10, Sheffield Scimitars 4, Deeside Dragons 5, Whitley Warriors 11, Nottingham Lions 2, Widness Wild 5, Solihull Barons 1. On oh, now we go down to NIHL Division 2 North Laidler action from Saturday. Altrincham Aces 2, Hull Jets 7, Sheffield Titans 3, Bradford Bulldogs 1, Sutton Sting 2, Nottingham Lions N2 4. And on Sunday, Bradford Bulldogs 5, Coventry NIHL Blaze 2, and Nottingham Lions N2 0. Sheffield Titans 6 Roundup of the scores from across the leagues we try and follow each week We'll try and get some more on the next edition of the Time to Go Wild Radio podcast Well, some big scores at the weekend A few interesting results Now, I'm trying to get hold of the overtime and penalty shootouts for the EIHA leagues is a little tricky, so I think I read somewhere about the Sheffield D side game that might have actually gone to overtime, but that was a you know an important win for D side getting their season off to a, a decent start. Solway Sharks being very very big on goal, scoring twenty goals and only shipping four over the weekend with a ten two win over Solly Hull at home and then a ten two win in Blackburn on Sunday. <sighs> Whitley putting big points again with an 11-2 win against Nottingham but a big surprise win I think for everybody who was at Planet Ice Witness on Sunday in a manner of speaking was the speed at which uh, the game was played and the speed at which the goals were scored for the YKK Witness while going up against the Solihull Barons the fact that in the first period within the first couple of minutes bang they were 2-0 up and then bang in the second period two more went in very very quickly and you know big big bounce back after the previous couple of weeks and the previous few results um as many of you can see the witness wild have had a major rebuild um sadly we lost a few of our uh, very experienced and actually quite well loved they became players um of course, over the other end of the M62, Hull have managed to get their National League team back together. Instead of it being Pirates now, the old original moniker of the Seahawks is back. So the Hull Seahawks are back. They're having a tough time of it starting off their season, but um, no doubt they'll turn things around. It's been a bit tricky. Every team, when often when they're brand new to a league, particularly if they've had a few seasons out, it takes some time to get things together. I mean, the other team in the National League now that's joined are the Bristol Pitbulls, who've joined from the EIHA uh, South Leagues. But they're having a reasonable time of things. I mean, OK, they lost 8-4 to Peterborough at home on Saturday. And I'm sure I saw another one somewhere. Oh, yep, yeah, uh, they lost 5-2 to the Sheffield Steel Dogs, but... You know, Peterborough Phantoms and the Sheffield Steel Dogs are very, very well entrenched teams in those leagues. Uh, one team that's looking sharp this year are the Leeds Knights in the National League. Big win over Bees um, on Saturday with a 5 2 win. So they're picking up well. One team that's a bit of a surprise, we were expecting a big, big jump from them at the start of the season, is Telford Tigers in the National League. Uh, losing two goals to one to Basingstoke on Saturday, and then 4-3 loss to Peterborough on the Sunday. But Telford got some quality players there. They're going to bounce back really, really quickly, no doubt. So, enough of scores. What have we been up to? Well, the summer has been a bit of a change with things, of course. From the Time to Go Wild radio show, we would like to pass our thanks to... 
uh, our former chairman of the club, Matt Lloyd. His dedication to ice hockey goes without question. Uh, of course, he's been there from the beginning, setting up the wild, looking after the wild, getting us going, making sure the team was built well, behind the scenes, putting a lot of hard work and a lot of mileage in, I must say, over the uh, the previous crumbs, would it be, um, so, well, since 2013, basically, putting on, he puts in a lot of mileage anyway for ice hockey, but also for the wild, travelling around the country, coming to the rink week in, week out, Ruth's been, be, you know, supported him so much. We thank both of them for their commitment, and of course, you know, it goes without saying. Without his support as well, the Time to Go Wild Radio podcast would not be where we are now. And of course, he helped back us with the additional support of Halton Community Radio when we started. So, again, a big, big thank you to Matt and also Ruth. Massive support they've both been over the, uh, well, is it nine years? This is our 10th year as a club, so the first nine years of uh, of the Witness Wild. And the club have grown and grown and grown to where we are today, taking us through from the early days in um, Division 2 North, building it through with all the coaches we've had. And, well, you can see where we are now. A <laughs> A name that is um, known and uh, looked for, you can say, throughout the uh, division. Well, the division one, division two, as we've been in each league, and teams, you know, compete against us, and we compete against them, and it's a big, big game every time when you come to Widnes, and people know that, and all the opposition know that, and they know it also when Widnes go to their rinks. So, you know, again, thanks, Matt. It's been an honour been a pleasure we know you won't be a stranger and uh, what can we say we now uh, move forward with Danny Davis and Georgina, uh, sorry, Georgia Weeks it's a new a new era we move into we turn the page we move forward and slight new directions with things but you know things have to evolve if you don't evolve you stagnate you stand still and that's what the uh, the club will be doing, be evolving and moving forward over the coming months and years. So, of course, some of the players we've lost were big, big, important names for the club. However, recruitment's been big. We've brought in some some guys who have really started to make an impact. And, you know, players such as Andrew Hopkins, he's a big guy, <laughs> I must admit. And... Um, you know, Miles Finney in goal. Miles this weekend was peppered with pucks in the third period. He's faced a lot of pucks and he's shown his worth. What can we say? You know, there's a lot of other guys who've rejoined the club, of course, come back and, you know, returned. Big shout out as well to our most recent re-signing after a little while away. Is Chris G rejoining the Wild, and uh, he didn't look out of place at all this, this weekend on the ice with the guys. And of course, we've picked up on a two-way. One guy who made a big impact is Adam Giseko. He's of course on a two-way with the Hull Jets, and having seen him play for the Hull Jets in the past, we know what to expect. And in fact, he's delivering week in, week out. We've also had some of our juniors playing up, and you'll hear a bit more about them in a little while when I play the interview that I got at the end of the game on Sunday night with uh, Rich Hager, our player coach. In terms of what else is going on, there's um, different fields, a lot of the videography going on throughout all the teams and the leagues, new things being pushed forward. So there's a lots of change, but lots of evolution. Of course, you've got to be there. And um, things like the 50-50 and chuck duck they're still going on at Planet Ice Witness each week and they are not disappointing. The guys who sell the ducks and sell those 50-50 tickets, they've been pulling the stops out and uh, one lucky winner this week got the rollover and uh, rather happy she was, I must say. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yikes. So, uh, of course, those 50-50 tickets do go a long way and, um, yep, yeah, Thank you for taking part and keep taking part each week. So, 
enough of me rambling on. Of course, we had the game on Sunday against the Solihull Barons. Now, the previous week I did try and get some interviews after the Whitley game, but unfortunately uh, a few technical issues meant I couldn't. Hence why we're back this week. Uh, But I did get Rich Haggart. And we had a little bit of a chat after the game, and this is what he had to say. A busy night at the barn for the YKK with this round. I've got player coach Rich Hanger with us. We've had a bit of a stall with Time to Go Wild podcast. So, Rich, interesting start to the season, should we say? Yeah, we've had a, a few ups and downs. Um, we struggled with a few players missing each week. Um, even this week, we're still missing a few players, but uh, a much better performance tonight. Uh, really good from the guys, and uh, we're going to next weekend now uh, on a high. I mean, we'll just say a little bit about last week because I, I tried to catch some other players, but technical issues meant it wasn't recording. I mean, it was a tough game, always going to be tough against Whitley Bay. You'd have the away leg up there. Again, a big game. And in the end, it, I think it was just legs gave out in the third. Yeah, I think towards the end, the last six, seven minutes, we we just we didn't have anything left, and um, they took control, um, took the chances. We didn't. Um, so one of them that nothing went our way. So we've learned from it from last week. We've gone into this week, and we'll put in a proper performance tonight. So, well, tonight, what can I say? First two periods. It was like bing bang goal, bing bang goal within the first couple of minutes of each period. That must be a massive lift for everybody in the dressing room when you do that kind of thing. Yeah, like I say, we, we, we spoke as a team. We had some home truths after the game last week. Um, we we worked on things on Thursday um, and we, we brought into the game tonight and you could see the difference from last week to this week. So that's how we've got to play and that's what I expect from everybody going forward, nothing less. I mean, Solihull are always a tough team to play against, a mixture of youth and experience. And tonight, we caught them on the hop, I would think we could say, in that those first two periods. Yeah, we came with a plan, we executed our plan, and um, we didn't really give them a sniff all game. So that that's the main priority, is making sure that we execute what we trained for. We didn't do that the week before. Um, and like I say, we had, to, we had a good conversation as a team and um, we've come out at the other side of it and like I say, look at, to look at tonight, it's a good performance from everybody across the team. I mean, Miles Finney put in another big stellar performance between the pipes tonight. That third period, a lot of shots. Sometimes you could see that many shots in a game, never mind a period. Yeah, we, we knew that was going to happen though. They had nothing to lose at that point. Um, so we knew that it was going to come out hard um, and we just had to make sure that we... we closed down the the options that they had and there was just shooting from anywhere in the third and um, we just had to make sure that we didn't let them get in there for the rebounds or anything like that so we knew what to expect and um, yeah I think we did a good job in the end. So uh, you know, all in all first few games now of the season under, the, under our belts couple of road games couple of home games how is it sort of feeling now that the season's actually underway? Well, I, like I said, I think we're, we've been a little bit hit and miss um, uh, for the first few weeks. Even this week, we're missing four players tonight, so next week's the first week where we've pretty much got a full team, so we'll go into training on Thursday, prepare the right way for the double head area um, at home, and um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll start to see the real um, re- results and reward of what we've been training towards come the next few weeks. I mean, this week, we had one of our, uh, I'll say, two-way players, Adam Giseko, on the score sheet. He's proved his worth already with Hull. He's proved his worth in terms of work rate and now rewarded with a goal tonight. Yeah, he's a, he's a quality player. Um, it's why we brought him here. He works hard, not just um, going forward, but getting back as well. He's not afraid to put his body in there. And like tonight, we've, as you've seen, he can pass and shoot. So um, he's got a bright future ahead of him. Um, giving him the opportunity here to play D1, um, it was a no-brainer for me to, to bring him in. So kids like that, they deserve the opportunities. And um, giving him them chances is what they've got to earn it. And that's exactly what he's doing. And a familiar face has returned to the wild this week. First, first proper fixture for him, Chris G. That, that's uh, you know, you can see a lot of the faces around the rink litter when they saw him back on the ice. Yeah, he's a good guy to have around the changing room as well. He's uh, obviously, like you say, he's, he's loved by the fans and uh, he's loved in the changing room as well. He's very, he's a utility player, so he can pretty much play anywhere that I ask him to play. He's willing to put in the hard work and he's not not afraid to put his body in the way there as well, like you saw towards the end of that game. So yeah, it's a good addition for us going going forward. So yeah, it's a it's a good plus for us. And I've got I've got to ask, 
I mean, we've had a couple of the the, uh, the juniors making it through now. Jake Meehan's been on a couple of shifts now here at home, and you know you can see just how much he's chomping at the bit to go. Yeah, and that's what we want. We want these young kids to be able to push the, the, um, our more experienced players as well. And um, ever since I've come here, like I said, I'll give the young kids that are willing to put in the effort and time and and, and willing to go for the team um, the chances. So Jake's just one of the examples. Obviously, we brought Reese in, and like you say about Adam as well. So um, we've even got J- uh, Jake Lowndes backing up for us tonight. So Mike is doing a fantastic job with the juniors, and um, I'm, I'm willing to give them guys the opportunity if they're willing to put the work in so hopefully that shows the young kids that are out there that if they, if they do put in the hard work that they'll get the opportunities when they come so keep keep working hard yeah i mean we've got quite a few of the uh, form, well academy and former academy players playing at other teams now be it sutton or altrincham and it's good to see them taking a step up and you come through the whole academy of course you know exactly what it takes to come through so again you know what to expect as you're saying it's it's a big step, though, going from sort of under 18s into league play, isn't it? It is, yeah. But like you say, we've got to give them opportunities. They're they're the future of hockey at the end of the day. And like, and like you rightly say, there's there's Joe Bark that stepped on the ban- bench a few times for us. Um, that plays for Sutton now. There's Evan that's starting at Altringham each week, and he's doing a fantastic job over there. So, well, like that's the aim is to help develop these young kids and give them opportunities while still doing what we do here. So, um, like I say, if they're, if they're willing to work and they're willing to put in the effort, then they'll get the opportunities when they come as well. I mean, goaltending is a, a tough position to fill when you've got a goaltender starting on fire, as we had last season, and then we got an injury. Evan stepped in, took the bit by the you know took it by the, uh, the the bull by the horn, so to speak, made a big stand, proved his worth, and this extra ice time he's going to get on the two way with Altrincham is only going to benefit him. Yeah, and I think the, the start to his season, if you look at what Altrincham have done there already, uh, th- three games, yes, they lost last night, but three wins already from the first four games for him starting there, and um, he's put up some big, big performances and getting some good reviews for it. so he's good to, to have around and have him pushing miles even um, to make sure that they keep each other on the turf as well so it, it's a bright future for Witness uh, not just at what we're doing now but also the guys that are coming through so we hopefully we continue to do that I mean I know there's a lot of people a bit well we were all very disappointed but we do wish Harrison Walker well over in Leeds Mars has come in as a bit of an unknown but <laughs> well he's shown his worth he's shown his metal and he's shown just how good he is yeah, um, Matt, obviously he's uh, come from National League and um, uh, I think, like you say, he's, he's proved his worth and uh, having him back there, he, like Harrison last year, he, when you've got a keeper like that, you you know what you're getting and um, that, that helps the whole team from back to front going forward. So, yeah, it's a, it's a massive plus to have people like that around. And like you say, even Evan, um, last season when he stepped in, so it, it's good to have these keepers around that, that help us as well. So... Um, um, we'll keep going and we'll keep working together as a team. Um, so, yeah. Well, I'll uh, let you get away now. I go. <laughs> oh, yes, the, the wonders of Mikey Gilbert just pottering through there as he is. As always. Cheeky self as he always is. Don't worry, listeners, we'll catch him up for, uh, probably with some junior stuff in the future. But, Rich, it's, um, you know, the barn's been getting full again. The noise is getting there. The players are playing well win lose or uh, overtimes we're looking forward to the rest of the season now yeah just uh, like say the the fans are, are the sixth man on the ice they, they help us massively so keep coming down keep supporting us and we'll keep putting in the performances for you well I'll let you get uh, sorted and get home thanks for joining me thank you thanks Rich of course it's always a good thing to try and catch up with uh, members of the team after the game get their feelings thoughts and of course Mikey Gilbert being Mikey Gilbert crashing the interview right towards the end don't worry Mikey we will torture you we will be getting interviews with you lots and lots and lots of interviews because of course the Junior Academy is um, well underway with their season and um, of course a number of players have moved on or um, are stepping up as well we've had a couple of the guys making their step up into the wild um, and some of the other guys, they've moved on to the likes of Sutton or um, even Altrincham, Altrincham Aces, and they've had a decent start to the season. Our, our uh, rivals from just down the uh, M56, 
So, yeah, anything goes, anything's possible. So, uh, you never know. And, of course, one of the big changes to um, D1 North this year, after the Wild stepped up last year officially into the league, our uh, neighbours from across the border in North Wales are back. Yes, the D-side Dragons. They make their return to um, league action and step up to D1 North morally. So, of course, those big games will be back. And, of course, that's where, um, let's just say, uh, this now comes into play. Now, normally we'd be doing a big roundup of fixtures coming up, but at the moment... It's a little tricky gathering them all together, so all being well, from the next podcast, we will have more fixtures for you. But the big one, of course, is on Saturday, in a manner of speaking. It's a cup game. It's the M56 Cup they're playing. And to this Saturday, the 8th of October, it is the D-Side Dragons who will be at Planet Ice Witness. The face-off was originally 7pm. It is now 5 30 p.m. So YKK Witness Wild against the D Side Dragons Saturday 8th of October. It's 5 p.m. at Planet Ice Witness. And it's a double head weekend for us because then on Sunday 9th of October, 5 p.m. face off at Planet Ice Witness, your YKK Witness Wild are in action yet again. The Nottingham Lions are the visitors this time, so Two games this weekend, Saturday the 8th, D-Side Dragons, 5.30pm. Do not be late. It's sh- it's going to be a big one. We know it's going to be a big one. They're, they're going to be back in force, no doubt. So get yourselves down there. Get your spot. Get your seat. Get yourselves loud and proud for that one. And then on Sunday, it's the Nottingham Lions, 5.30pm and of course because of the fixtures on the Saturday the original junior fixtures the under 12s against Whitley and the under 16s against Sheffield on Saturday the 8th of October they have been rescheduled so once again Saturday 8th of October D-Side Dragons at Planet Ice Witness against your YKK Witness well 5.30pm face off and then on Sunday It's the Nottingham Lions' usual 5.30pm face-off at Planet Ice. Witness! Ah, Now, other little bit. Of course, where would we be without our sponsors? And of course, a slight twist and change to the list. Of course, our title sponsor is unchanged for this season and we thank them again for their support. It's YKK, title sponsors of your YKK Witness Wild. Additional sponsors now, and our home penalty box this season is sponsored by Fresco Environmental. And then we also have our other very valued sponsors of Sprakes & Son, MPG Maintenance Property Services, Crosscheck Clothing, another new sponsor in Puck Drop, as well as the University of Salford and our charity again this year, the Halton Haven Hospice. Of course, if you want everything to do with the uh, YKK Witness Wild, We've got our social media and web outlets of uh, Facebook or Twitter.com slash Witness Wild. Or you can swap Witness Wild for TTGW Radio. And that's for the podcast. We also have our Instagram page, Instagram.com slash Witness Wild Official. And the YouTube page of YouTube.com slash Witness Wild Ice Hockey Club. (sighs) It's a busy old time out there. All being well, we've got plenty to keep you going. Of course, the podcasts all being well will be available on uh, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music Podcasts, as well as Podbean, and through, of course, our YouTube page. So where does that leave us for this week? Well, I'm going to cut things short. Well, is it is it short or not? I don't know. If you want to get in touch with us, of course, throughout the week, you can do throughout through Facebook and Twitter.com slash TTGW Radio. If you want to text, 
you can do 07849767755. Texts are a normal rate or normal tariff, whatever you are, it's a normal number. You can also email us radio at witnesswild.co.uk if you've got any questions, queries, suggestions, etc. Hopefully, the podcast's going to sort of rebuild itself back into where it normally is with the usual roundup extra of fixtures, etc., etc., as we go on. And hopefully, a few round tables might happen as well. All again depends on personal workloads, logistics, etc. But what can I say? The, f- the season's now well underway. The people have been loud and proud at um, Planet Ice Witness, and I can tell from what I've seen around on the uh, social media outlets, they've been loud and proud at the rinks around the country. All I can say is, I hope you've enjoyed the podcast. Stick with us. We'll get better. We'll be bigger. We'll get going. We'll be back next time, hopefully next week, with another one. So keep your eyes out. Keep your ears peeled. You know it's the best thing to do on a... After a weekend, stick with Time to Go Wild Radio. Till the next time, I'll catch you then. Ta-ra!